Hello. Um, I wanted to just make a quick video. Um, it's probably not going to be quick. Basically, I wanted to just talk about this build that I got that I just sort of put together recently um, that I'm very happy with. Um, and just kind of show it off, just give it a little showcase to what you might be able to expect with a similar type of build. Um, so when I first, this is 3.9 Metamorph League. When I first played this league, I was doing Arc, and that was okay just to level with, and it got me to like level 90 something. I got through some of the stuff, so through most of the content, to like half of the way through my Atlas before I re-rolled to a different character entirely because I got so bored with Arc, and I really hit a wall there. Um, started playing Cyclone, um, which is really good. I had a I had a really good impale cyclone build that had like um the savior it had the paradoxica that had it was a really nice paradoxica with it with impale on one of the crafted mods um pretty good build but i also got bored of that to be honest uh, it's just so you know it's the same shit over and over again just spinning around just not fun really it just wasn't that fun so then i i wanted and also i was dying all the time because cyclone is pretty uh sketchy you can, you can get yourself into a bad situation a lot a lot of the times with cyclone um so i wanted to i wanted to make a build that was more interesting more fun and also um very survivable so this build i have 7600 life which is a pretty good amount it's a pretty high amount with what i saw compared to other top tier builds and the reason why that is is because I have I have highly highly prioritized uh, life rolls on my items over really anything else. And the reason why is because um, this is a flicker strike build, by the way. Um, with flicker strike, you know, as long as everything dies, I don't. It doesn't really matter how much more DPS you're doing. As long as everything dies, as long as you have enough DPS to kill stuff. And everything just dies you know I don't need to overkill everything so I figured I would not really stress the critical strike or the DPS or whatever on my items as much as just life like for example with these rings right these rings are not that expensive there's nothing really that good about these rings they just have a lot of life on them and some DPS but what I could have done is gotten like assassin's mark or vulnerability which would cost me like 30x if I also had like some good life rolls or whatever on it. You can juice your builds to actually be insane, but is that really necessary? And I don't, I don't think it is for what I'm doing right now. Just you know, tier 16s or whatever, nothing crazy. I'm not trying to like speed run uh, Uber Elder or nothing. So, um, what I tried to prioritize with this build is is survivability, uh, life rolls, you know. All that, all that good stuff, and I try to keep everything pretty budget. Uh, this two-hander is not expensive. Um, like, it's really not that bad. It's like two exalt for a good one. This has um, close to, it has 469% increased physical damage, which is pretty good. You know, could be a little better, but it's pretty good. It has um, almost perfect life roll, and it has the 8% increased attack speed. So they're really good on those two fronts, and the the DPS is is pretty okay. I could make it a little bit better if I wanted to by adding 30% quality with the Menagerie Corrupt thing. Or there's some other ways, I think. But um, this is a good-ass sword. Um, you know, it's just good. Uh, I, I was tired of one-hander. I, I wanted to do a two-hander. I don't really know why either. It's just something that I wanted to do. Uh, you know, the Savior is like 15 exalts. Um, my Paradoxica was like 10 exalts. I wanted to just sort of sell that take like two two exalts or three exalts because it actually cost me like another two to, to six link it so like four exalts for the for the weapon and then use the rest of it for my other items the helmet is inexpensive this helmet has a lab enchant which is really good flicker strike damage per frenzy charge is really really good it could be a little better i'm not using anything in my build that gives me more frenzy charges so it could be better but even with your default like max three i think frenzy charges it's still it's still a lot of extra damage um, it has, but this also has a good life roll. It has 79, which is uh, tier 3. I, I thought it was going to be better than that, to be honest. It's, it's, it's a good amount of life. But it also has 46 strength, which is nice. Good for the life, good for the DPS. 
a little bit of lightning resistance. So it's got good life, um, some decent resistance with just one field, obviously, lightning. Um, and a crafted modifier that gives me more armor, more evasion, more life. And it has a lab enchant. So this sort of covers my life requirement and it covers my DPS by just having that lab enchant. So that's nice. Um, these rings, DPS is pretty good on these rings, to be honest. Uh, it could be much better, obviously, like I said, with the curses. But it has 76 life and 55 strength. That's really good. Um, this ring has 90 life, 41 strength. So that's also really good. Uh, 90 being attainable via the catalysts applied, which I did not do. Um, the catalysts themselves is going to cost you like 200 C if you want to do 20%. Each catalyst for um, life rolls is 20 C each. So I bought this ring for one exalt, but it has more of an exalt of just the catalysts that go into this item, which is interesting that he was selling it for so low. But it has the, uh, it's a steel ring, which is nice. It has that 4 to 14 attacks. It has um, some resistances. 15 to all is, is really good, honestly. Um, and then the increased damage is just nice on the crafted modifier. One second. Uh, I'm probably going to edit this out. Me just doing a trade. It's not exciting. These gloves are really good. Um, it has 20% implicit melee damage. It has 28% on the explicit. Is this the wrong gem or something? Why is he not accepting? Alcer murderous. Oh shit, this is the wrong one. Shit. <laughs> I had them both listed for 12C. That's funny. Okay, um, so this has a lot of DPS, attack speed, which is really good, some fire resistance, um, it has the socketed gem supported by faster attacks, which is really good. Um, these, these gloves are expensive. These gloves are like 10 to 15 exalts, so that's not necessarily budget, but I already had them, so I'm going to use them. I didn't want to sell them, I, you know, th they fit for my cyclone, they also fit for this build. But you don't have to have this. Really, the only thing that's really good about these is the increased melee damage and the socketed gems thing, which only helps for my leaf slam. You know, it just it just gives me a little bit better of a leaf slam. Um, this chest is also expensive, but not necessary. This is an explosion chest, so killed enemies explode, dealing three percent of their life as physical damage. That is really good. It's a super fucking rare modifier. Um, it is a Crusader modifier. You have to have a Crusader item to be able to get this in, to, to get the modifier. Um, I myself made a couple of these um, just by buying Crusader chests, Astral Plates, and then rolling it a bunch with Chaos and Alteration. Um, the first the first one I got really lucky. I got it like on the fourth roll with Chaos, and then I realized afterwards that I was super lucky because it took me like 200 C on the next one, and then it took me 1200 plus Alteration. For the, for the third one. So that you know gave me a better idea of how rare it is. So getting this explosion modifier with uh, other good modifiers is super rare. Um, but this does have the attacks have critical strike chance, which is also a very good modifier. So it has two very good modifiers, a little bit of life, some resistance, and then life regen, which this is actually a tier one life regen roll, but that's not important for me because I have Vol Pact, which means um, life regeneration has no effect, so that actually doesn't matter for me. Um, but this is a good-ass chest. The explosion deals AoE damage around everything that dies for a pretty substantial amount of damage, depending on whatever the monster's maximum health was. That's really good, but I do believe that you don't have to have that. Uh, it's really nice, it helped my build a lot, but if you had just your typical six link chest with like life resistances and maybe some critical strike chance or whatever, I, st I still think you're going to have very similar results in clearing than I do. It's just nice to have explosions, you know, whatever. It's just cool. Um, my belt has just resistances, life, standard stuff. It's got a gem in it that also gives me some life and some critical strike chance. Um, not too expensive here, honestly. I think this is like one, maybe two exalts because it doesn't have maximum life on it. It has a crafted maximum life, so it's much less valuable in that regard. It does have 10% increase though, which is really nice. But I think I bought this for like two exalts, honestly. Um, these boots are really good too. So these boots are also unnecessarily good. Uh, good maximum life, 
decent resistances, 30% movement speed, very good. Chance to gain elusive, very good. And it has the really good lab enchant of 16% increased attack cast speed if you killed recently. That is pretty much always up. Um, I am always killing, so I almost always have 16% increased attack and cast speed. These boots are really good, but once again, not necessary. This is just good. It's not necessary. You can have your standard life, resistances, movement speed, and you'll be totally fine. You'll be able to clear almost the same as I am without having, I think these are like 25 exalt boots. This is like 30 to 40. This, this is like 25, and these are like 15 to 20. But all three of these I just had, I've just accumulated over time. You don't need these at all. You can have your standard slots on these on these uh, slots. You can have your standard items on these slots and still do exactly what I'm doing. Uh, one thing that's very important to talk about, my amulet has life, strength, you know, spell damage. I, I put that on there myself with an exalt. I don't want it, obviously. I don't do spells, so that's unfortunate. I, I you know, anything else would have been nice, but... Um, Critical Strike, you know, every, oh, that's all good, right? But what's very important, especially with Flicker Strike, is the Mind Drinker. So the Anointment allocates Mind Drinker, which gives me increased maximum mana, which is okay, that's nice. Uh, it gives me Attack Damage Leech as mana, very important, and it gives me 2% of mana recovered on a kill. Now, with Flicker Strike, I'm killing a lot of things at once, which means I'm going to be getting, like, all of my mana back. Everything that I, every mana that I spend, I am immediately getting back. So that is super, super good. Very important. If I did not have this anointment, I would not be able to do what I'm doing without some other thing on my build somewhere. Because Flicker Strike is 52 mana, and like a lot of melee builds, I have auras. I have Pride. I have Flesh and or Blood and Sand. I have Precision. I have Dread Banner. I have all these auras that are taking up a lot of my mana. Which you know, if you have a melee build or probably any other build, that you have your mana pool just sitting there, you could be using that mana pool, reserving it, to give yourself helpful auras. Okay? Um, so, yeah. 52 mana goes by really fast when you're flicker striking and you're casting it like 10 times a second. Uh, your mana's all gone. You have to have something that gives you mana back as much as you're spending it. So that's very important. Um, in my in my sword, I don't have. Well, okay, let's talk about the gems. So I got fortify, um, brutality, multi strike, melee splash, and ancestral call, both awakened, because of the clear potential. So awakened is very good for more splash, um, more AOE. Very good, very important. Also not that expensive. I think it was just like three exalts or something like that. Um, ancestral call more expensive. Um, this is a level one that I bought, and you can see I've barely I'm almost to level two but it takes a while um, I bought it at level one because level three four and five were so expensive I think a level five twenty percent is like eight exalts or something like that and I didn't want to spend that on on that so I'm just gonna level it up myself uh, but this is so important because the normal ancestral call has the line of text that reads supported strike skills target three or it says target two additional nearby enemies the Awakened targets three. That's very important. That is like an exponential increase of DPS down the line because you're targeting more things with each strike, so you're able to do, you know, just a, a, it's like almost like a more multiplier to your potential. One additional str uh, targeted enemy is going to give you so much more potential of how you can jump around the map and do crazy clears with Flicker Strike. So that's very important. Um, that's basically my build, uh, the items. Uh, my flasks, I didn't really spend too much time on the flasks. I've been using these same flasks ever since my Cyclone build. I have Removal of Curses, I have Cinder Swallow, um, I have Freeze and Chill, I have Bleeding, you know. I got this thing which gives me a shitload of armor and blocking, you know. It all seems to work. I, you know, fuck it. I, I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about my flasks. Uh, I had this for 12, right? Let's just do 11 now. Okay, um, oops. so what I'm going to show you is me doing a tier 16 map, which is Shrine, a good map for this build because it's got a lot of tightly grouped uh, packs of enemies. Um, I'm going to do the map, I'm going to clear it real quick, I'm going to kill the boss, kill the metamorph, and explain to you how I do that. But one thing I didn't talk about is that I also use Blaze Storm. 
So Flicker Strike is really good for clearing. Terrible. Terrible for boss fights. Because you use Frenzy Charges, right? <coughs> Flicker Strike uses Frenzy Charges, which means after you attack a bunch of times on the single target, you will run out of Frenzy Charges. You'll run out of... Um, you'll run out of the ability to keep casting it. So it's literally, you go from okay, decent DPS on a single target, to just nothing because you're not casting anything anymore. If you if your build only has Flicker Strike, then there's going to be a big problem unless you have some kind of crazy Frenzy Charge whatever in your build. You're just you're, you're going to just be able you're not going to be able to kill anything that has a lot of health, which is why I have Blade Storm. Um, Blade Storm is just a good secondary ability that, which doesn't require a lot of crazy other stuff. Like nothing really in my build is focused towards Blade Storm. My build is basically focused towards Flicker Strike. However, I have my two-hander that is focused towards Bladestorm to make it as good as it could be with just um, five support gems. And it actually works. So using Impale, using melee physical damage, using um, Multi-Strike, using Brutality, and using Fortify, this actually makes Bladestorm very, very good. Um, I'm actually able to kill bosses fairly quickly um, compared to like a Cyclone build or whatever. Not going to be that quick. But it's like a secondary ability that actually works for what I need it to do, which I'll show that off as well. Um, also, when you stand inside of the Blade Storm, you actually get more attack speed. So if I am ever killing something that's not going to move, like a Metamorph, they don't move. They, some of them don't move. You can actually use Blade Storm and then just use Flicker Strike while you're still standing in Blade Storm, and then your Flicker Strike is even better. Okay. Anyways, um, like I said, right? Flicker Strike costs. Uh, frenzy charges. So how do I get frenzy charges? Well, you get a, you can have a chance to get frenzy charges by just killing stuff, or you can use blood rage. When you have blood rage active, it will kill you, but it also um, gives you more life leech, more attack speed, um, and it says killing an enemy while this buff is active refreshes the buff duration, which means as long as you have it on and you're killing stuff, it'll con it'll continually be on. There's like a 11 or 12 seconds before it goes away. So as long as you pay attention and see that it is on all the time, you will always have it on, and it, can, it increases your chance of getting a frenzy charge from killing an enemy. And when what this comes down to is killing a whole pack of enemies at once, you are almost guaranteed to have a max frenzy charge every time you go through a pack. So this allows me, so Blood Rage plus um, Mind Drinker? Yeah. Blood Rage plus Mind Drinker allows me to basically be able to cast fr uh, Flicker Strike all the time, which I am going to demonstrate now. I have this uh, Tier 16 Shrine map. It's got 20% Chisel quality. It has some pretty good modifiers, but I corrupted it to give it more quantity, and it uh, uh, unidentified, which is which is good, honestly. Um, so let's make sure we have Sextants. We're missing one. Okay, we have that 30% increased. Magic pack size, which is really good. And then we have this, which is which is nice. More monsters, basically. Okay. So, also, um, unfortunately, I think I'm out of fragments. So, we're going to have to go without using fragments. I could use some fossils, but I'm just going to say fuck it. And we're going to jump into an Einhar mission, because I'll show how to kill... I'll show off how this, how this build kills uh, red beasts, which is almost like a boss. They have a lot of life, a lot of physical damage reduction. I'll show you how I handle those. <laughs> Um, so yeah, here we go, you know, I'm not really going to talk too much when I'm doing this because it's hard to talk and play at the same time, but from this point forward, I'm just going to basically show you how I do my map, how I clear, and how I kill bosses and everything. I hope you enjoy watching. And here we go. Didn't even break his sweat.
Bad. Double, 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 double. So one thing that's really good about metamorphs is that um, I blaze storm at the start, I deal some decent DPS, and then once he spawns uh, minions, I can start flicker striking. And usually I'll start flicker striking, and then everything will just die, and all the explosions and all of the flicker strike damage will be enough to just kill the metamorph. So let's see if that happens. I'm gonna use some more currency here. Beefy. Damn, that was like a two-phase fight. Oh well. Still worked out pretty well, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's just a basic explanation or showcase of of this build. I missed. F I just have a lot of monsters somewhere. I'm just gonna run back and try to find these real quick. Um, oh, look at this. It's a whole thing. Oh my god, it was, there was one left from that strong box. Some monsters, yeah, now they're all dead. Oh, 
that was that was them. That was all of them. Okay. Just a, just a quick little showcase of this build. Uh, to be honest, I've done a lot of shrine maps. That one was a little bit slower than most, and the boss was not as good, and the metamorph was also not as good. But that was a basic, like, that is average, probably a little less than average, I guess, of how they usually go. Really fast clear speeds. Your, your clear speed is limited to your ability to loot stuff and to move around smartly. I mean, but, you know, if you're able to get towards enemies, if you're able to move towards enemies then you're in the clear to kill stuff immediately as fast as you want. Like, it's crazy. The DPS with Flicker Strike, with um, Multi Strike, with um, Ancestral Call, and also with my added Explosion Chest, it, it, the potential to kill everything at once is there. Like, really. If you had every enemy on the map at once and you could just cast Flicker Strike on all of them, they would all fucking die. That's how good it is. So that's what I like so much about Flicker Strike is that it's really all down to your ability to move around quickly and then kill stuff as you're going. Meanwhile, you have Cyclone where you have to just spin around the whole map, basically like you're walking around the map on your own. Flicker Strike, you just jump all around the place. Like a lot of times, I'll start a cast on Flicker Strike and it just, it, it just takes me, it pulls me across the whole map to other places that I don't even want to go to because it just keeps chaining to all these packs of monsters, and I think that's way more fun. The sort of uncertainty of how each pack is going to go, the crazy, immediate, fucking just everything's dead. It, it just feels so much more satisfying, and I really suggest playing this sort of a build. It's so much fun, and I hope you subscribe because I'm really trying to build my uh, YouTube channel here. Um, you know, I got a lot of great videos in the catalog. Uh, <laughs> if you like Rust, if you like memes, you know, funny Rust videos, I got plenty of those. I got two of those, I think. Um, if you like DayZ, you know. You can join one of the 2,000, uh, my, my highest viewed video, and you can watch a shitty tutorial that I made about how to build a base in DayZ. Super helpful. Um, also, one really great thing about that video is that halfway through the video, I didn't plan it very well, and the server started to go to day, or to, started to go to nighttime, which means half the video is in pitch black. So that's nice. Um... I got plenty of other videos. I got um, I got me dying like three times to Cirrus when I was doing my shitty Cyclone build. That's really fun to watch. Um, I got something else that I can't think of. Basically, plenty of more content to come in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was maybe helpful. I hope it inspired you to go make yourself a Flicker Strike guide or a Flicker Strike build. You know. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, that's all. Uh, goodbye.